So I thought it was about time I gave you a quick behind the scenes tour of the Mark Ellis Review Studio. Hello and welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Remember to subscribe so you do not miss a single episode in the future. So this is the official Mark Ellis Reviews studio. It's the one that I make all the videos from. It's the one that I do all these A-roll to camera pieces from. I do most of the B-roll in here as well. And I've had a few people in the comments ask just for a bit of a behind the scenes tour of how it's set up and what I do in here. So just to set the scene, this is a spare bedroom in my house. It's a tiny room. It's very hard to get across how small this room is. It's, it's just tiny. <laughs> um, you'd get a single bed in here and not much more to be honest. So it's a very small square room that I've had to make best use of. And most YouTubers are the same. We're not kind of gifted these great big studios that you see elsewhere. So I had to make use of this space and I'm pretty happy with it. I've got a lot to do. Still, I'm not, there's certain things that I do need to improve on, which I'll explain later, but it's basically split into two areas. So I have my desk A and behind the camera, desk B. I could have given them fancy names, but couldn't be bothered. Desk A is, it doubles as my work desk as well. This is where I do all my business from, it's where I run the channel from, and it's where I edit videos normally, and like I say, it's where I do my normal to camera pieces. Desk B is a recent addition, it's a standing desk, and yeah, it's something which I've got some plans for, but it's just nice to have those two areas. The reason it's in, it's split in two is for a bit of variation, really. One is to give me this standing desk space, which is really important from a health perspective. It's very important to get up and move around and, and work standing up as it is sitting down. And the other reason is to give me a bit of variety for B-roll. So when I'm shooting video of products and things that I'm reviewing, it's nice to have this desk contrasted by the desk over there. So it's just it's just a bit of variety really. It's a way to make a very small room more usable from a video creator's perspective. Desk A itself is very cheaply put together. So it's two trestle things from Ikea, which I think you can still get. And it's just also from Ikea, this kind of wooden top. Um, I think altogether, it cost me about a hundred pounds or something. It wasn't very expensive at all, but the wood, the, the wooden top is really good quality from Ikea. I was really impressed with that. But that's all it is. It's not fixed to it. it you know, it, technically it will come off very easily. It's very heavy. It's also quite a big desk for the room, but I needed that just to give me some space for shooting stuff and for, for working really. So yeah, a very cheap way of putting a, a desk together, but it, it works really well. Now the computer, I have done a video explaining why I'm using this computer, which I will link to up here somewhere, um, but it is a M1 Mac Mini. It's my brand new M1 Mac Mini connected to this great big MSI 34 inch widescreen monitor. And like I say, watch, have a watch of that video. I'll put a link in the description as well. It kind of explains why I've made this switch from a laptop to this. But yeah, that's now the kind of hub of everything I do. The Mac Mini is the specced up 16 gig version. It has 512 gig of, of storage on there. So it's not the full fully specced up version, but it's as much as I wanted. And it's an amazing computer. I'll leave it at that because I'm gonna have some further thoughts on that in a, in a future video. Now I've paired it with this Keychron K2 keyboard. And lots of people notice this in my videos and they always ask what it is. That, that is what it is, it's a K2 Keychron. And I will put a link to it in the description. Again, a review will follow this soon, but it's brilliant. And it's got these very tactile, clicky keyboards, old mechanical key, uh, keys, sorry. And I love it, it's fantastic. I've recently purchased the MX Master from Logitech. It's the MX Master 3, and it's an amazing mouse. I'm typically a trackpad user, an Apple trackpad user, which I, I still love those, but the MX Master, it's, until you get one in your hands, it's hard to explain, but it's ergonomically perfect in terms of a mouse, very customizable. It's very good from a video editing perspective because you can customize all the buttons in Final Cut Pro to work as you wish. And yeah, I love it. It's, I've only had it a couple of weeks actually, but it's immediately one of my favorite things on this desk. It's just fantastic. Now, obviously I work with a lot of files, a lot of big video files. I have on this desk, a SanDisk Extreme Pro, I think it is. It's the top version they do, the little, little portable rugged hard drive. And I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm doing all of my editing off that drive. It's only one terabyte, but the way I work with that, I 
leave only the files that I'm working on on that drive and they get transferred to a, a four terabyte backup drive which is then backed up to the cloud. As soon as I finish recording this, for example, it goes onto that SanDisk. I edit directly from it. Speed-wise, it's fantastic. I'll put a link in the description. They are very, very good. They're not cheap, but they if you're a video creator and you are using a Mac with perhaps or a, a PC with less storage internally, then it's a brilliant option to have a very, very fast way of transferring big files. Now, the other things you can see on this desk, which are fairly interesting, are these two great big KRK studio monitors. Now, a little secret here, they're not connected at all at the moment. Um, they're, not, they're not just there for show. I, I, I do, I think I intend on using them. Um, they mean quite a lot to me because I've had them for many years and I, um, I I produce music in my spare time. I don't do as much of it as I used to, but when I did do it a lot, these were my go-to monitors of choice and they are brilliant. So if you're looking for a really good pair of studio monitors, the KRK Rockets are pretty good. Now, whether, like I say, whether or not they stay on the desk, I don't know. I do all of my monitoring for audio and video now via headphones. I know some people will scoff at that, but the headphones I use are also by KRK. Now I debated about whether about showing you these because they are so rough and ready. I've had these for years. The top band uh, foam thing is pretty much worn away. It looks pretty terrible. The ear pads themselves are pretty bad as well. Um, but the headphones themselves, oh, and also they, uh, the connection's dodging. I have to wiggle the connection to make it work. But as a pair of very flat response headphones, and by that I mean they're not coloured in any way, so like a pair of Beats headphones or the AirPods Max or you know, a pair of Sony headphones, they have a certain EQ profile built into them. KRK's are monitor quality headphones, so a bit like these speakers, they, don't, they have a very flat profile, so what you hear is pretty accurate basically. And I know they're headphones, but I've monitored on headphones for a long time now, so all the videos I, I make come through these. A couple of other things on the desk, I have this laptop stand, it's a vertical laptop stand here. It contains a 16 inch MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air, and it's just a very convenient way of storing laptops. There is also, as you can see, a headphone stand containing or supporting my new AirPods Max. Video on those coming fairly soon, although I will link to my first impressions open boxing thing up here. Um, very interesting pair of headphones. Also a HomePod mini, which I've also done a little video on. That's pretty much it for this desk, to be honest. Um, oh, there is an iPad, iPad Air 4. Um, I've switched to this uh, from my iPad 12.9 inch, which is still in here. There are little trinkets on here that I won't go into, but they're little, if you call them Easter eggs, if you like, that occasionally pop up in, in other videos. But that's it, it's a very simple IKEA desk. Now beneath it, someone asked in my Discord channel to talk about cable management. I will show you the cables here, there you go. That's how horrendous it is. Um, I've done virtually no cable management whatsoever. That is one of my plans. I'm gonna make it a bit tidier, but yeah, under the desk, it's just an absolute mess. The other thing to mention actually are these lights here, which are these kind of fluorescent uh, blue LED lights, just to add a bit of color really. Um, they're all linked to Siri, so I can say, hey Siri, change the lights to green. Green, coming right up. Hey Siri, turn the lights to blue. They serve no real function apart from just giving a bit of depth to the, the overall image. And I quite like it actually. I quite like working at desks like this. So um, again, links are in the description if you want to check them out. But that's it. That is this desk. There's two storage boxes underneath which are just for storing random bits and pieces. So this is desk B. And this is a more recent addition to the studio. The whole point of this was to have a second place, as I say, to work standing up, which is very important when you can do that. It makes a big difference to your back and your posture and all that sort of stuff. And the other one was to have a somewhere else to film stuff. And it's a really simple setup on here, to be honest. It's something which will change, I think, over the next few months. Um, but it's kind of, I suppose, characterized by this 27 inch iMac, which I've had since 2017. I mean, by today's standards, it's a very old computer. It's got a four core Intel i5 processor. I upgraded it to 32 gig of RAM myself, but I absolutely love it. And I could never get rid of this computer until Apple bring out an M1 version or an M something version of the iMac. And I'm using Apple's standard Magic Keyboard and Magic Trackpad setup. I love the Magic Trackpad actually, I've always been a big fan of it. And it's just a nice alternative to the MX Master 3 that's over there. The other thing you can see on here are a couple of pair of headphones on this nice headphone stand. It's the um, Sony XM4s and the Huron 3s, stupid name. That is desk two. It's very simple. There's some rubbish underneath it. There's quite often a dog underneath there as well. My, my dog, Eddie, he, 
likes it down there. And yeah, it's just nice to have this little space, really. Now, I just wanted to give you a little insight into the camera gear that I use, because this obviously is a YouTube channel and I have to use lots of camera equipment. I'm also a videographer partly by trade, so yeah, I've amassed quite a lot of gear over the years. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on, on the video side of things, let me know in the comments. I'm not embarrassed at all, but my video gear is pretty old by today's standards. So the main camera I film on is this Sony a7S II. It's 4K, it's a beast of a low light camera. If you look into the Sony a7S series, they are just renowned for being incredible in low light, but it has several flaws which don't make it a particularly good YouTube camera. One of which is the battery life, which is pretty terrible. Two is the fact that the autofocus is dreadful. It uses a very old form of face, it's not even face detection, but an old form of autofocus for video, which I don't use. So I always have to focus myself for videos. It is why I'm quite often looking above the camera at a image of myself just to make sure I am definitely in focus. I've got it paired with a, a 17 to 40 Canon L lens at the moment, although I use a 24 to 70 Canon L lens on it for B-roll shots and stuff like that. Don't buy this if you're considering starting your own YouTube channel and you want some form of vlogging camera because it's dreadful for that reason. But I love it anyway. There's an old 7D up here, Canon 7D. Has a special place in my heart because it was one of my first proper DSLR cameras that I bought. Very dusty. Um, don't use it at all really at the minute to be honest, but I just like it being up there. The other camera which is very close to my heart is this, by today's standards, very old Canon 5D Mark III. Now if you don't know what this is, it's a professional, much loved in the along, among the Canon community full frame camera and it's for stills, it, even today it's amazing. This camera originally came out I think in 2012, so it's a very old camera, you know, it's coming on for 10 years old now, but it's still image quality wise, thanks to, to Canon Color Science and the size of the sensor and just the build quality, it's still an incredibly good camera. I use this for all of the stills, all of the, or pretty much all of the thumbnails that you see are taken with this camera. I have done some B-roll with it. Some of my older videos were actually filmed with this for the A-roll stuff, but it only records 1080p and it's a bit limited video-wise, so I had to make the switch to the to the A7S II, which is full frame as well and all the rest of it, but I could never let go of this camera. I'm gonna keep this forever, just because it's the first camera that I made money with as well. There's a collection of other lenses on there, which I won't bother going into. There's also a Mavic Pro drone. Um, if you wanna know more about that, let me know basically. The only other stuff to bear in mind really in terms of video gear is the audio, which I think most people will, will agree is more important than video. You need to hear me clearly. Like I say, I'm not using the normal mic today that I would normally use. I'm using this lav mic, but I normally use a Rode NTG1 condenser overhead mic, which sits just above the camera out of shot. A few people have commented on the, the quality of the, the audio of this channel. Thank you very much. Again, sorry if it's not up to its normal standards today, but it's all down to that Rode NTG1 and some post-processing that I do in Logic Pro. The other thing I have audio-wise is an absolute abomination of sound deadening material, which at the minute is just wedged into the corner of the room. Lighting-wise, I have a ring light, which is lighting me at the moment. It's not perfect. Something else I need to improve on in future. And I have some lights behind, which are kind of hidden behind the, the iMac and stuff, just to give a bit of depth and what have you. Also, it's worth mentioning the overhead lights, which play quite an important role. Um, I had an electrician put in three rows of overhead LEDs, and they're all individually dimmable by by each line if you like and it's just handy to have that control and you can set the different white balances and stuff with them so they play quite an important role in terms of your laugh hair light and all that sort of stuff um, very useful and lastly one of the best things i bought for this studio is this hard castle tool chest basically it's built for, for tools but i use it for all my little camera gear stuff like screws and memory cards and all, all the trust me when you get into this game of doing youtube videos or doing any kind of videography you end up with so much little so many little things that you need to put somewhere and that just kind of contains them more nicely and tidily gets rid of them and it's somewhere to put my batteries and all that kind of stuff so one thing i forgot to mention was that the rode shotgun microphone is plugged directly into a zoom h4n pro recorder that's what does the actual uh, audio recording and that is great again not cheap but actually a, a brilliant way of capturing the audio from that mic there are a few things i can change so the, the big thing at the moment is the camera i mentioned this earlier i love the sony a7s2 but it isn't isn't the best tool for the job. It, it slows me down a fair bit. 
and I have issues with the quality when it comes to things like being in focus and what have you. The way I'm going to fix that is to replace the camera and I'm probably going to go with the a7S III. That is, uh, it's either that or the Canon C70. I'm, I'm debating between the two at the moment, but whichever, whichever one I go for, it's going to be a big, big improvement, trust me. The other thing is the lighting I mentioned earlier. I want to do something simpler with the lighting in here. I'm not sure what yet, but I want to reduce the size of it and just make it easier to set up. And that's a bit of a theme, really, that the idea behind changing this room this year is to make things easier to use and to get videos out quicker, get A roll, get B roll, everything shot as quickly as possible and in the best possible quality. That is how you run a YouTube channel if you're serious about it. And at the moment, it takes me a little bit too long to get set up to, to record. I don't want that. I want to walk in, hit a few buttons and go. That's, that's my kind of aim this year to get to that stage. I wanted to show you this warts and all because it's, this is the reality of running a YouTube channel in your bedroom. It's, it's like this, you know? Um, I do have bigger plans further down the line, but at the moment, I'm more than happy with this room. It's fantastic. Now, as mentioned earlier, one big change I have made recently is to go from a 16-inch MacBook Pro to a M1 Mac Mini. And initial findings are pretty, pretty exciting. But if you want to find out why I've made that switch, carry on watching for a link to that video. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching as always, and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.